Jesus Christ, you are the light of the world. The light of darkness can overcome. Stay with us now, for it is evening, and the day is almost over. Let your light scatter the darkness and shine within you.
May our prayers come before you, O oh God, as incense. And may your presence surround and fill us, so that in union with all creation, we might sing your praise and your love in our lives. Amen. So one of the things that we've been working on, again, is going through the Ten Commandments and understanding, uh, looking at Christian community through that lens. Again, the commands were given so that we can live in best community together. And so we're going to be moving on to our next commandment, the seventh commandment. Thou shalt not steal. Vasis das, what does this mean? We should fear and love God so that we do not take our neighbor's money or possessions or get them in any dishonest way, but help him to improve and protect his possessions and income. All right, that sounds pretty self-explanatory, um, I think. You know, we're not supposed to steal. So I can just say that. All right, guys, this is how we do this. Don't steal from each other. It's the end of the sermon. We're going to, well, you guys are already home, but we're going to get to get home, right? But it, it's, it's not that simple. I, I agree that within community, especially Christian community, we should not steal from each other, possessions or anything else. But what is so amazing is what Luther expounds upon. It's not just that we don't take or dishonestly get money from other people, but the idea is that we also try to help them and help them keep what they've earned or, or, or the livelihood. And so I think that there is, is something very interesting within this, this explanation of, of the seventh commandment. And so it's, it's not so much of what we earn, what we don't earn, those who, who receive and those who do not. I actually think that within Christian community, it can be viewed um, in a much broader sense. And so the idea that... Um, if we don't get something or if somebody else gets something and we don't, like there's a, there's limited supply of whatever this is, right? That's scarcity because we want what we get, right? If, if we can grab our hands in there and grab it before anyone else can, that's what we'll do. And we see this a lot. I mean, have you seen during Christmas, good, uh, good Friday, Black Friday sales, what they decide to do is they go and buy boatloads of the same toy and then sell it for double the price. That happened this last year. That's what scarcity says. There's only so much of this to go, and so you need to get what you can. Now, if you switch over here, and this is abundance, this box over here, I'm making a box if you don't know what this is. I'm a bad mind. That's why I'm a pastor. Um, but this box over here contains something that, that is abundant, that there's, it, it's not ending. You know, There's no end to this, this box of stuff. And so scarcity and abundance. Scarcity and abundance. Okay. I'm looking at myself on the screen I'm like that's backwards. Okay. But the idea of scarcity means that if God's grace comes to somebody else, that if God's grace or the faith that, that the Holy Spirit brings comes to somebody else, that I automatically get upset. You know, and that happened before. That's happened before in my life. Has it happened to you? I hope not, but it's happened to me. When I'll talk to another pastor, and they'll say, look at all this stuff that we're doing in my church. Look at all the stuff that this is happening. And I would, I would feel so jealous of them. I, I wouldn't even be happy. I'd say, oh, that's so nice. But in my head, I'd be like, gosh, you know, he gets or she gets to do all this fun stuff. And then even like with good things, you know, if, if somebody wins something or somebody comes across good luck, you know, or some sort of grace, a gift, right? It's like, well, I wish I would have gotten that, right? And I can remember this when I was a kid. When I was a kid, we went to the fair, okay? And I remember walking through the parking lot and I was right next to my sister. My sister looks down and goes, oh my gosh, a 20. She grabs it and it was hers. I said, dang it, that's not enough. You know, I didn't get my 20 and I should at least get half of that, right? That's scarcity. And so if we look over in abundance, this is where Luther is talking about when we need to preserve and we need to protect because this is abundance. Abundance, there's not enough. We can take all we want. We can give it to everybody. We can dole it out to our church. We can dole it out to our IT people, everything. Because there's so much of an abundance of this. And so if we give it away, it doesn't lose anything. And so this is where we are at. And I think what it's talking about in the Christian community is talking about faith. That there are going to be times within our Christian community where some people have stronger faith or some people have lower faith. And I'm not saying that this is just our people, but this is me as well. 
that as a Christian community, it doesn't mean that we have it together. Again, I keep preaching this. The reason we're here at this holy hospital is because we are sick. The only reason we as a Christian community are gathered together is because we are the ones that say we are sinful and there's no way we can do it on our own. So the rest of the world's out there saying, yeah, I might do some bad things, but I can take care of this on my own. I can take care of, of the anxiety and the depression and the anger that's going on in our culture right now. Or I'm not feeling good enough about where I am in my life, so I can take care of that by bettering myself. Or, oh my gosh, look how, how out of shape I am. I need to do this. And yet again, what the Lutherans say is there's nothing, nothing we can do to gain salvation, to gain the gift that God has given us. And so I want to knock this box out of the way. This is, this is the box of, of, you know, that we don't have enough. So we'll kick that out of the way. And I didn't kick back there. It's, it's out of church. Okay. All we have is this box over here. And this is the box of abundance. This is the box of grace. And so the reality that we live in, again, of having strong faith or, or lower faith, we're supposed to protect each other. That when one of us is falling, one of us is feeling like we can't get through this on our own, that we pick them up. And we protect that precious faith that God has given us. Because what this world is going to do is continually tear us down. The world is going to continually show us that we have no control over this. The world is going to continually show us that the control that we do have is only going to lead to our death. That yes, we can try to gain things. We can try to gain money and gain all these worldly possessions. But again, you go back to what Jesus said. Why gain the world and yet forfeit your life? And so as we gain all of this faith, as we have this abundance of grace, it's not that we have to be careful of who we give it to. Because, you know, we don't know if they'll take care of it. We don't know if they'll cherish it. We don't know if they'll live into it. And the only reason that we know this is because we don't do it. We are all saved. You are saved. You have the most precious gift that we could ever have that God has given us. And yet, what do we do? We try to give it away. We push it away from our lives and say, you know, I'm not good enough for this right now. I can't have God living inside of me right now. And God says, I don't care. I've chosen to live in you. I've chosen to save you. And you are mine. And so in this idea of protecting faith, of protecting others' faith in a Christian community, it's not that we're all going to have it together. It's not that we're all going to get it right, and it's not that we're all going to be perfect Christians, but quite the opposite, that we are not perfect, that we can't do it on our, as ourselves, and there's nothing we can do to earn our salvation, which is why we are here. We are all at this hospital to protect each other, to learn about God's grace that is already here, to live rooted in God's grace so that we can dole out that grace. That you can grab that grace and instead of holding to ourselves saying there's not enough to go around, we understand that God wants us to give it to everyone. And so as we leave this place, I want us to do that. Get this box, carry it with you, throw some grace at some people. Throw grace at that person that cut you off when you were going to be late to church. <laughs> I got to practice that this, night, this evening. Give grace to the person that you're checking out with, that has been there and worked a long day having to deal with people with masks, no masks, everything else, the pains of the world. Give grace to that person because we have an abundance. It's something that we do not have to protect because there's so much of it. This is our reality. You have been saved. God lives in you and God wants you to realize the wonderful grace that you are living in. This wonderful reality that is in the cross. Amen. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome.
Let us pray. Great merciful God, source and ground of all goodness and life, give to your people the peace that passes all understanding and the will to live your gospel of mercy and justice through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless our God. Sue for, for canting for us tonight. It, it's it's so wonderful, and I I find so much meaning in this liturgy. So at least for me, I absolutely love it. Um, and I just wanted to say, peace be with you all, and also with you. So please share peace with each other. Thank you, Courtney. And um and uh, go forth in peace. Thank you, gosh, for being here. That was awesome. So you. Thank you for singing along. It helps. <laughs>